footwork was, was all very similar. Well, it ends up that uh, the massage that Okazaki taught has some very, very close parallels to the ancient Tibetan hand heel ones. So I think it was uh, uh, Kershon and I, and who else was in that class? Uh, Tom uh, got up every morning, uh, went to uh, Lama Migli's uh, dojo, went up on the roof an hour before the sun came up, did meditations, and, and learned the uh, ancient uh, Tibetan hand healing uh, techniques. Well, a lot of them are very, very, I mean, a few of them are identical. You can see the influence that uh, uh, Okazaki had from how far it how far it came from Tibet to China to Japan. And uh, it's all based upon acupuncture. And of course, if you look in the ancient Tibetan uh, writings, you can find where they've been doing acupuncture for uh, uh, many, many, many years uh, before the Chinese. So I'm going to pass these around. And you just get a, this was a, a book that he handed out to all of us. And Kirsch just got back, diagnosis and treatment uh, with uh, Tibetan medicine. And I'll hand this around, you guys can just take a look at it. Okay. Okay. On, uh, down to me. For about 10, 15 years, uh, we, we, we've been doing this massage exactly the same. Uh, I worked as a masseur uh, in several different situations, mainly for healing, uh, for quite a while. And found, I discovered a lot about it uh, that you really need to discover by hands-on. So it's, it's something that happens to you as you're practicing it. It's a process. And I can show you the kata uh, the moves, uh, the, the uh, mental projection that you need to do while you're doing the massage, but something more will, have, will take place. Uh, Lama Nigni uh, would do meditations, breathing meditations, to develop your chi or your ki. Uh, and it's a, it's a very important part of jiu-jitsu to be able to develop your qi and Chinese term qi in order to use them for self-defense or for combat. Uh, Okazaki used massage to help develop that. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an exchange back and forth. You, you, you do massage, you work with your... Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, you work with your uh, your hands and your energy doing massage, and then you go back and do martial arts, and it's a different application of the same energy. And you learn more about it. And then you go back and do massage, and you learn more about it. So to enhance this, this is a process back and forth. For those of you who, who study the martial arts, uh, about the time you think you got the massage down, you, you, you go through the, some of your techniques, you go back and do the massage, and the child's you learn something more. So, those of you who do not do martial arts, there's breathing exercise, meditations that you can do, that uh, very similar to if you, take, if you took yoga or uh, tai chi or, or something like that, uh, and then go back Every time you practice that, then go back and do a massage. And you'll find there's a growth process, a learning process. Uh, we have a, a technique, and Estes used to demonstrate this, uh, this very point for this very reason. Uh, and it's the first technique in our system, Kata Dei of uh, how to redirect your energy. And he, he like to use Katate Zushi, and I, I'll do the same thing. Uh, so I just need a 
Somebody grabs your wrist, there's a philosophy that takes place. One way to look at it, who has who? I mean, my hand's free, able to move, his is restricted. And his perception that he has me uh, is not necessarily correct. Setting that aside, in order for him to wrap his hand around my wrist, he has to use his mind and somewhat of his chi and his spirit. And he puts, his, puts that in motion, that has motion and direction, this way, and wraps around my wrist. So in, in our jiu-jitsu techniques, we never oppose force or force, we go with it. So we take and we run our chi, our, our energy out of our hand, and put it the same direction his is going. Now there's a lever there involved also. There's a lever to and a pipe. So you join with the energy of your opponent, and you usually get out of any techniques. Now some people, they'll, they'll make a fist and they'll start pulling like this. See, what I'm doing here, I'm going this way, and, he, and I can probably get out because I can pull a few there. But I'm off balance, and that's muscle and strength. You, instead, you want to use energy to get out, okay, to redirect. There's an exercise we do to develop that. It's, and it's an energy that you're going to, we're, we're going to all do this, because I want you to feel it. Uh, put your hand there, and one hand under here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, see my arm is strong here. I'm going to make my arm strong, I'm going to use muscle, and he's going to bend my arm. Okay, he has an advantage there. He has a leverage advantage. Now I'm going to make my arm soft. See that? It's soft. The energy coming in here, I'm going, and the energy coming in here, I'm going to redirect out there. And I'm not going to use muscle for that. Okay? <laughs> So the more you put into it, the stronger it gets. There's a way you can keep someone from picking you up. You can use your key, your chi. They try to pick you up. And uh, we had a guy that used to push 350 pounds downstairs on the weights every morning. He'd come up and, and I demonstrated. He says, grab me under my shoulders and pick me up. And he picked me up and I said, what do you weigh? He says, 120 pounds. I said, well, no, it's 150. <laughs> I said, now try and do it again. And he couldn't pick me up. Uh, but it's always chi and energy. And that's what we use if we're going to do healing work and do massage. You have, have to be able to flow that energy. Now, if you flow it from yourself, thank you. Uh, if you flow it from yourself, then you're going to deplete yourself. So what I want you to do, and we're going to do this exercise right now. Uh, I want you to pair up just like you saw Bodhi and I do. And I want you to be kind of gentle on each other first, okay? Now, I, I think that I'm way, way stronger than, than maybe not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Make it fit strong. Make it strong. Rigid. Okay. So I can bend his. Ah, pretty good. Pretty good. Now, she walked. I'm just doing a comparison. I'm not using all my strength. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. And what he's doing is taking my my energy and, and redirecting it out. What happens when that that takes place? You see a fire hose. You take a fire hose with no no wire in it. You can just flop it around. Fill up all wire. Try and bend it. It won't bend. It takes ten firemen. To to make us curve because it's full of this, this water energy. And that's what you're doing. So I want you to pair up and try this out a little bit. I want to see, make sure everybody gets a result. Okay, let's do it.
out and touch the wall and push with your energy. Now, whether you're, or not you can do that right away depends upon how much you practice it and how much you want to use this, use this energy. Yeah, it kind of feel a little silly at first because you're thinking, well, I really don't, I'm not really, I can do this and not do it. I have to consciously not go. Remember, you're conditioning your reflex. Now in the martial arts, what we do it for, one of the reasons we do it for, is balance. Okay? It's a tool of balance. If I can condition my reflexes to, as soon as I do this, I push. But it also works if I'm falling over, I can catch myself and push myself back. And it, it works very subtle muscles in different areas. So when you're doing techniques, uh, you're doing a move from the ball here, and you might be out of balance, you can, you can catch yourself. So it's an extending your sensitivity of your mind and having your body in harmony with that. If you're going to do healing arts and you're going to take your palm in your hand and you're going to place the palm in your hand on someone and have it do some healing, you have to be able to learn the system. You have to be able to learn this energy. And the exercise for it again is to push, push, and allow that to happen. I want to see everybody do it again. The, the energy is there. You see what it did with not bending your arm. It's the same project as if somebody's trying to bend your arm and, and it works even better. I can put my hand out this way 
And imagine somebody's trying to bend my arm, and I push, it makes an arm stronger, and pushes it out. I, I also uh, attach on and pull. You know, so when you're moving, you're using the uh, uh, movement. Uh, you need to be able to be aware of every, everything in the room and your relativity to everything. And you'll be able to move smoother and, and, and more harmony with the body. Okay, uh, that's an exercise for practicing at home. Another one is just kind of like stand on one foot and balance yourself against the walls. Okay. Push against the walls. Okay. And that helps. Or hang. There's a lot of different ways you can practice this. Now, Lama Nigmi uh, has a way uh, where he has you run energy out of your hands, sitting in the seiza. Uh, and uh, it, it takes after hours and hours and hours of meditation, develops a very similar thing. A way to heat you up, we uh, we get it in, in real cold weather with your shirts four o'clock in the morning and the Himalaya is five o'clock and it's pretty cold and you have to go up there with no, no shirt on or just a thin shirt and sit there and stay warm. That helps develop your key too. So there's a lot of different processes. The important thing is you remember you're using key and this energy while you're doing the massage. Okay? Now, back to, uh, uh, let's see. We, have we paired up? It, it, I'd like everybody to pair up like you want to pair up. Your choice. And, and just lay on your tongue. Okay. Arms down to the side. And the head to that side for now. Okay? This is the beginning position. Now if you're at a massage table, that's okay. That's okay too, but it better not be real high. Once you make contact with the person, and we're not going to use oil yet. I'm just going to you're you're going to we're going to do one quarter at a time. We're going to talk about it a little bit first. Once you make contact with the person, you do not do not break contact until the massage is over. Right? I want this person to, to know every move of this massage and to be able to anticipate what's coming next. Of course, of course after, if they're getting their first massage from you, they're not going to know that. After the second massage, they're going to have a pretty good idea. After the third massage, they're going to know exactly every move that's coming. And I want them to feel, no, your left hand is here, your right hand is here, so that you can become in harmony and that you do this massage together. If you want to write that down, make sure you got that right. Do not release your contact until the massage is over with. And you're doing the massage together. The receiving and how you receive it is just as important as how you give it. There will be a natural resistance to the type of massage you're going to be doing, the depth of massage. There's going to be a natural resistance to the depth of the massage that you're going to be doing. The person receiving the massage needs to have the trust to relax. Now, Well, yeah, you, you, the person giving the massage needs to be real. You need to continually run your chi. You need, you need to be like 
a light bulb, giving off light. Like a light bulb, the power comes from somewhere else. Yeah, we'll get into that later. You don't want to deplete your own personal energy doing this massage. You're going to be su supplied with power doing it, depending upon your faith uh, uh, or your understanding of physics. And I don't care how you imagine it, but you are going to be supplied with God, Buddha, whatever, you're going to get the energy and you're like a conduit. You're going to supply the energy to the universe. This massage, and this is probably one of the most important parts to understand, borders on pain. Now, my sensei, Professor Fisher, or a uh, Muslim, does a massage on you. It's not and you're a black belt, it doesn't border on pain. It is pain. But if you let go of it, it becomes something else that's not pain. And so when we're doing this on each other, we want to be able to get deep enough to where you're, the person is comfortable, but it's like, well, well, if he goes any deeper, I'm going to pat out. And, and here, when we feel pain in the flats, we, we pat out, OK? And we want to stay right on that edge where you're going to feel, well, maybe I need to pat out. And then you'll find, well, it's not so bad. Maybe I can let him go deeper. And after about three massages, you'd be surprised how much you can take. You know, the body is a strange thing, the nervous system. If, if, you, if you get touched in a way that you are not used to, in, in a heavy, way it can feel, it'll feel like pain when it's really the brain just saying, oh, what's that? Oh, it must be pain. Okay. So you, you got to relax. Let it happen. Okay. With the, uh, and we'll start with eye oil. We'll, we'll go into oil later. With a, with a palm on the small of the back. And you tell the person, you know, if I push too hard, if it hurts, uh, let me know. Pat out, or uh, and that's usually uh, the best way to do it. That Kogazaki always just says, you know, just pat out. That's what he's always doing his students. Interesting thing about Kogazaki had a uh, school of massage and in, uh, uh, and jiu jitsu both, and you weren't invited until uh, you weren't invited to the massage until after you uh, learned these energies in the jiu jitsu class. Well, his son has a school of massage, and you're not invited to the jiu-jitsu class until after you learn the massage. <laughs> so, so I don't know, they got that kind of flipped. Uh, but currently, they're, they're linked. OK, so elbow. We call this elbow massage. And I'm going to break the rule right go here. We rarely use the tip of our elbow. We will in the, as you get up to the more advanced. Uh, and we will in a couple spots even in the beginning. We're using mainly the forearm when we're doing this. We want to avoid uh, any of the bones, uh, any of the spinal column, uh, the scapula. Right? You want to avoid bone against bone. So you're going to work on the, it helps if you know anatomy. Uh, you're going to work on the muscles, uh, Upper trapezius is where we're starting. And uh, we're going to use this, this portion of our arm. You're going to place the, your elbow like on the mat, almost on the mat. And when you rotate, when you rotate this way, it, it turns the ball. And you can, you can scoop, scoop this way and push back. Scoop this way and push back. We're using this. So we use a lot of that. We're going to work on the back of the neck right here. And then back. And uh, you notice I'm going, I'm on the right hand side, I'm going counterclockwise and scooping. I'm 
right up here on this muscle. Now, with a loose hand, not rigid, with a loose hand, you're going to rock back and forth. I'm rocking back and forth right about here. Change the angle of this way, then go straight alongside of the spine. Here's the spine. There's a the muscle comes down. There's muscle here. There's a spine, and there's a muscle here. And you want to go right straight down, and try not to put a lot of pressure on the, the tip of the elbow. Most of it right in the center of that muscle. And you're going to go down to about here, and because well, your scapula is pretty high. Uh, once you get below the scapula, and you can turn and use this part right here. The further down you go, when you get down to here, you start hitting the short ribs. You got to back off on pressure because you're gonna. That's going to be pretty sensitive to the short ribs. So, now if you have oil, you slide from one spot to another. If you don't have oil, you just pick it up and move. Now, I'm coming up, coming down, and coming up on the hip, the ridge of a bone coming up here. And you come right up, up on top of that ridge and work straight down. And here we use the tip of the elbow. One of the spots, right there, the hollow right there, um, where the hip joint is. And you reach, slide up to the middle of the gluteus maximus. And, and there you're going to use the tip of the elbow. And you're going to do it. going away from the heart are breaking up blockages. See, now you get on here and put a lot of pressure on it too. Shiro Okazaki, Master Okazaki's son, and they're up, uh, up against the wall and he's on a massage table, and Hachiro climbed up on his feet and he's doing an elbow stand, you know, on, on uh, this guy's back. And uh, the look on this guy's face, it was excruciating pain. He, was, he says, so you're a knee on, huh? Second degree black on. He says, we'll see. <coughs> So, and after you've done that, then you smooth it up, rub it real hard. You need oil to do that. And rub, pushing all that blood up towards the heart. Just exactly in reverse to what you had been doing. And smoothing the neck muscle. Okay? Now without, we're going we're to do this without oil first. And after we've done the whole massage without oil, then we're just going to finish up by doing, I'm going to come around and supervise everybody doing a massage on each other. Any questions about this quarter up to this point? All right. <clears throat> Next move is you can take the shirt off, right?
Okay, the next move is, remember, without, without uh, losing contact. You want to <coughs> maintain contact. We're going to grab the, grab the arm, grab the upper arm, I call it, this is the upper arm, closest to where we are, and grab the elbow and place the hand on the back, the small of their back, like that. Slide down and put the upper arm and pull. Just, just want to cradle with a, with the palm of your hand and cradle the cup, their shoulder up until the clavicle, I mean the scapula, uh, comes up. Get nice and loose, and then with oil, <clears throat> you're gonna you're gonna rub along and under it. here and here, and if you haven't got oil, <clears throat> we just squeeze, put a little digital pressure. Then, you're going to find that this, there's a little ridge right here, and just inside that, inside that ridge, you're going to put pressure all the way up to the top, and there's another ridge right here, in here, so there's a, an L, uh, a V, upside down V right here, you're gonna do digital pressure on. Up here, here, back, back down. And it, you need to do this fairly heavy, and you need oil to do it. And it's a real important to get this V done. So you, you work underneath, underneath here, Underneath here, see this shape of this? And some people's comes way back. Some people it's very difficult to get it up. And after you've worked underneath, then you work from the bottom corner up. See, this is like a little ridge here. It kind of sticks up. You work here and here. At that? So falls the shape. Yeah. Then you place the arm back on the table and you use your your forearm in the armpit, lightly, not real not with a lot of pressure, and do some breaking down, chopping action. Then the next move is you take your right hand, you put it under, and you grab this muscle, and you compress it. And you're compressing it all on the outside here, and squeeze it with your palm. Right down to the right, right down to the base of the deltoid. This is a deltoid, right to here. So you're squeezing here. You've already done the armpit, and so you've taken it down to here, so you're, now you're down to here, right? Now there's two different methods from this point on, and you're going to run across this in different areas depending upon the size of the person and the size of you. You're going to continue using your forearm or you're going to start to switch to your hands. Uh, you can use your forearm on, on uh, all the muscles unless the person's very small and you've got a big forearm. So then you switch to your hands. I'm going to have you start with your hands because uh, you'll, you'll learn that easier to begin with. Later, when you want to really uh, keep the speed up, and speed is important, 45 minutes is max you can do on a massage before you start losing ground. You want to do this whole massage in 45 minutes.
and it's going to be a lot of moves to do that in 45 minutes. So where you can pick up a little time with forearm instead of using your fingers, we try and do that. But right now, I, I think it's going to be easier for you to learn the, fi the fingers. I want you to also be in more contact with what you are massaging. Uh, you know, how many people here uh, have a pretty good understanding of anatomy? It helps if you do. Okay, uh, so we want to isolate the muscles uh, of the arm. So once we've gotten down, uh, we've done the deltoid, we've already got the armpit, now we have uh, the uh, uh, bicep and tricep to the muscle on the back and the muscle on the front of the arm. So we start with the muscle on the back of the arm and we squeeze it like this and work down chopping it like this. Here. Isolate it. Then we can chop it using this bone right here of the wrist. You want to break, break it up. It's like you're breaking it up this way and then massaging the blood out. So it's like chopping it this way instead of using the ridge of your hand. Uh, I want you to use weight. Support it with the other hand. And if you're working on a table, then it's a slightly different support structure, but it's very, very close. Okazaki massage was basically most of the time done on a mat. Something everybody did after class. Uh, they do one part or another, or a whole massage. So, you're going to do the chopping, chopping, down, down, and then up. Down, down, and then up. Down, down, and then up. Rubbing back, pushing the blood back, imagining pushing the blood back to the heart. Now, one thing I did fail to tell you is what I showed you, showed you on the back here. Chopping this all up, getting here, chopping it all up, and smoothing it out three times. You do it three times. That's number three all the way around. It's three. You repeat everything is three times. On, on the major muscles. The reason being, the first time you go down, you're going to go down and basically you're telling them and showing them what you're going to do. Or reminding them what you're going to do. You're checking it out at the same time. Is there any problems here? Is there any energy you feel that's, that's weird? Is there a, a real sensitive spot here? And you're, you're, you're keeping track of that on the first run down. So you don't want to go pounding your way down the first time as hard as you can go or as hard as you think they can take it. And you smooth it on the way back, that really lets you know, well, are there any really sensitive spots? Now the second time, you try to go a little deeper. Okay, now you're sensing, well, how deep are they going to let me go? Okay. How much, how relaxed are they going to be able to, uh, to get? And in the third one, it should be right at that edge of pain all the way. You should know, well, here, she can take this much pressure here, well, nah, not this much here, she's a little sensitive here. And, and so now you're getting to, to know the person. You're getting to really be in tune with the person, where their sensitive spots are, uh, where there might be a problem. Uh, so, three times. And then we do the same thing with, with each muscle, three times. Which, which, one, which was the one that you got to check with it? With energy coming out and the first one or the second one? The second one, you say you check on the path. Yeah, the first one you're going down. Yeah. You're just kind of letting them know where where you're going, what you're doing, and you're and and you're uh, you're also uh, checking for anything that feels different to you, yes. unusual. Okay. The second one you're checking also, only you're you're in more depth checking. Mm -hmm. You're seeing how far they're going to let you in, and you're building a you're building a, a, a communication, a different kind of communication with the person. Uh, it's a real strong connection you're, you're building 
of, of uh, the massage is not just one person massaging another. It's a communication. And you're trying to, uh, to get an image of, you're trying to feel what they're feeling, an image of what they're feeling. Uh, that'll turn into uh, the ability to, uh, to do some amazing healing things. Okay, the next is the uh, bicep, and you want, you want to take a, your finger each side of it and kind of grab it and like try to uh, pull, it, pull it apart a little bit, and you're going to go to the outside. Now, if the, you can, there's a way to use your forearm and massage this too. Uh, you can do both of them at the same time, blah, 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 like this, on a great big person. Just this one. Okay. So keep that in mind. On all these, you can use your forearm. So we're going to isolate this, and then I'm going to reach under with the upper arm here and uh, break it down, break it down, and then massage it back up. And that's a scooping motion, pushing blood back. Now I'll do I'll do that uh, breaking it up and pushing it back down, back up. I'll push it back up like three or four times. And I do the whole thing. Break it up and then push it back. Of course that's after you've isolated. So now you have this two move. This hand isolates it, identifies it feels there's any problems there, so, uh, then you're going to break it up and then smooth it all up. As a move for this, uh, to help this whole process out, you, you start up here and you squeeze, 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 and that's breaking up, doing the Bicep and trap, tricep at the same time. Okay. Then you take it back this way. Pump it out. All right? Can you show it again? This last, last half. Okay? You can, uh, what you want to do is break it down. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Breaking up, helping break up any additional any residual uh, blockages. So it's boom, boom, like breaking it up. Then smooth it back. This, this I put in the center of the tricep, and this is in the center of the bicep here. You take it between them this way too. So that's the last move. You want to get this blood out of here. Boom, boom. Okay. You've broken it all up. Uh, any any uh, blockages, and this is the last move to get it out. Uh, you can squeeze some out if you want. Okay. Remember, you you got time factor involved. Okay. That takes us down to the elbow. Any questions at this point? Okay. On this, we want to make sure if you if you just let things flop around, it's it's like they're not going to trust you. So all the moves you do, make sure that you have control. So those of you who are doing, what well, you got a cat? No, <laughs> chopping uh, juniper bushes or something. Oh. <laughs> uh, so those of you who do yawara won't have any problem with this. Okay, control their arm, okay, control the wrist, uh, and. Uh, Get, I like to, whether I'm on a, on a uh, massage table or not, I like to break it down first. We're going to start, start on the inside here. And we take this and lay it across your arm here. And we're going to start with our forearm. Boom, 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 As there's usually a lot of blockage in here. 
and then we're going to smooth it up. And I do this three times. Then I'm going to do the whole thing again. Three times. And three times. On the third time, we can run it up to the armpit. Boom. So now we're ready to straighten out your fingers. You find there's two bones right here. And you're going to put your fingers between them. <coughs> Starting up here and do circular motions. It's right here. Starting here, it's like you're, you're trying to separate these two bones with your fingers. And what you're doing is you're breaking down any blockages between them, what you're imagining. And then pushing the finger back up this way. So I'm supporting on this side and, and working between the two bones. From underneath. Now, <clears throat> depending upon the some people have flexibility, good flexibility. You can also use this. So, boom. And slide it back. Okay? And it depends upon the person you're working on, the size, the size of them, the size of your arms. But you can use a, use a forearm. Okay, next move. Hand on the inside, pull, pull it around, and you do a, a wrist stretch right here. So that they're boom, boom, boom. Wrist stretch. Because this way, and this way. And I'm twisting. Uh, yeah, katate tori. Okay. Boom. Boom. Now, this is really important. Then you put this part of your hand in their wrist, right here, and just just behind the thumb, and you squeeze, and you feel the hand feel like the hands pulling off. Yeah. Boom. And you probably get a little pop out of it. Yeah. Boom. Once you've done that, you place the back of place the wrist on your palm and pressure with your thumb right at the wrist and slip slip your thumb into their palm here and then replace it with your with your uh, elbow. And this is one of the times you're going to do fairly deep. Tip of the elbow and the palm. Make a circle with it. Okay. This is the point we're, pre we're pressing right here in the palm. Okay. Now, we're going to separate. That's why we put so much time so that we can, uh, once you do it, you'll, once you do it on somebody else, then you'll remember it. But, so we're separating the wrist, and we start at the wrist, palm side, and pressure. 
to the center of the pond. Then, and you can, you can, you know, if you're working on a really small person, you can just use your thumb, okay? But this is an important point to get really deep. The next spot is you, after you get really deep with this, you switch back to the thumb here, and you get hoku, which is uh, the webbing between the thumb and the first finger. And you do a little bit of a pinch in there. Feel that? Because this is a very, very, very important point. Right in here. This is a real, uh, real important balancing point. It's important enough where you should know its name. And it's called Hoku. H-O-K-U. Now we're stretching the webbing here, okay? And we're gonna reach up and we're gonna stretch between the other two fingers. And we're gonna stretch between the other two fingers and the last two fingers. Now after you've done that, this hand goes with the thumb on the palm. And you, what you're doing is you're coming, you're coming between each finger and between uh, the tendons that control that finger and that finger, there's a, a space, right? So once you've done whole coup, then you've stretched between each finger. That kind of lets them know where you're going and where you're headed. And you reach through and pinch between each finger starting way down here at the palm. Then you take between the next two. And between the next two. Then, the starting with the thumb, starting with the thumb, we're going to pinch, working our way down both sides of the thumb to uh, to the, to the tip of the finger, go down here. Once we've done that, we're gonna reach up like this, come down, and make a little uh, snap. You're just gonna slip off like that, right to the end of the, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go both sides, both sides of the finger then, next, here. And then we're gonna, Right? And we're not we're not doing this three times. This is one thing you don't do three times. Okay. These are real both points, both sides of the nail, right where the nail comes out of the finger, uh, here and here are real important that when you're coming down, when you're coming down the sides, you want to make sure you Get a little pressure on those, okay? Because I want that extra pressure. Those are our acupuncture points. Actually, they're very important. Is that like a ceiling of energy, or when you do that? Uh, more of a more of a cleaning, a cleaning, okay? Finishing. Yeah. Opening up, yeah. letting their chi flow. You're opening up rather, you're opening up their their uh, channels here uh, to let excess flow out. Okay. Now, <clears throat> that's that's doing the right side. That's this quadrant we just done. Now you turn and you go to the other side, and you do the other side. Uh, then, why did we start on the right side? Does anybody have any idea? Right. Away from the heart. Hmm? Away from the heart. Yes, sir. Yeah. <coughs> and there's another. Let's, let's look at it from a Western uh, perspective. Yeah. 